Good morning. Happy Monday. Look where I am today. I'm at school, but it's very quiet and very sad without you, and I'm very ready for us to get back and be together. But today, I'm getting ready to go on the bus and deliver some lunches for you guys today. But we're going to read chapter 15 before I leave, all right? This one's called The Dragon. This should be exciting. Everything would have gone all right if the pig had not caught a cold in his head while eating all of the wet sugar cane on the island. This is what happened. After they had pulled up the anchor without a sound and were moving the ship very, very carefully out of the bay, Gub Gub suddenly sneezed so loudly that the pirates on the other ship came rushing upstairs to see what the noise was. Uh, um, and, and as soon as they saw that the doctor was escaping, they sailed the other boat right across the entrance to the bay so that the doctor could not get out into the open sea. And then the leader of these bad men who um, who called himself Ben Ali the Dragon, shook his fist at the doctor and shouted across the water, Ha ha! You are caught, my friend. You were going to ride off in my ship, eh? But you are not a good enough sailor to beat me, the dragon. I want that duck you've got and the pig, too. We'll have pork chops and roast duck for supper tonight. And before I let you go home, you must make your friends send me a trunk full of gold. Poor Gub Gub began to weep. What does weep? mean that's right it means to cry and and dab dab made ready to fly to save her life but the owl too too whispered to the doctor keep him talking doctor be nice to him our old ship is bound to sink soon the rats said it would be at the bottom of the sea before tomorrow night and the rats are never wrong uh, so just be nice till the sh um un un until the ship sinks under him keep him talking what until tomorrow night said the doctor well I guess I'll do my best. Let me see, what could I talk about? Oh, let them come on, said Jip. We can fight the dirty rascals. There are only six of them. Let them come on. I'd love to tell that dog next door when we get home that I had bitten a real pirate. Oh, let them come, we can fight them. But they have guns and swords, uh, said the doctor. No, that would never do. I must talk to him. Look here, Ben Ollie. But before the doctor could say any more, the pirates began to sail the ship closer, laughing and saying to one another, who shall be the first to catch the pig? Poor Gub Gub was dreadfully frightened and the push me pull you began to sharpen his horns for a fight by rubbing them on the, on, on, on the front of the ship while Jib, uh, while Jip kept springing into the air and barking and calling Ben Alley bad names in the dog language. <clears throat> but this whole time something seemed to go wrong with the pirates. They stopped laughing and cracking jokes. They looked puzzled. What do you think puzzled means? Confused. Something, something was making them uneasy or uncomfortable. Then Ben Ollie, staring down at his feet, suddenly bellowed out, Thunder and lightning, then the boat's leaking! And then the other pirates peered over the side and they saw that the boat was indeed getting lower and lower in the water. And, and one of them said to Ben Ali, but surely if this old boat were sinking, we should see the rats leaving it. And Jip shouted across from the other ship, you great duffers, there are no rats there to leave. They left hours ago, ha ha to you. But of course, the, all of the men did not understand him because only Dr. Doolittle could talk to the animals. Soon the front end of the ship began to go down and down faster and faster till the boat looked almost as though it were standing on its head. And, and, and the pirates had to cling to the rails and the masts and the ropes and anything to keep them from sliding off. And then the sea rushed roaring in and through all the windows and doors and, the last, the sh and at last the ship plunged right down to the bottom of the sea making a dreadful gurgling sound and the six bad men were left bobbing about in the deep water of the bay. Some of them started to swim for the shores of the island while others came and tried to get onto the boat where the doctor was, but Jip kept snapping at their noses so that they were afraid to climb up the side of the ship. Then suddenly they all cried out in great fear. What do you think they might be afraid of that would be in the ocean? The sharks, the sharks are coming. Let us get onto the ship before they eat us. Help, help, the sharks, the sharks. And now the doctor could see all over the bay the backs of big fishes swimming quickly through the water. And one great shark came close to the ship and poking his nose out of the water, he said to the doctor, are you John Doolittle, the famous animal doctor? 
Yes, said Dr. Doolittle, that is my name. Well, said the shark, we know these pirates to be a bad group of guys, especially Ben Ollie. If they are annoying you, we will gladly eat them up for you and then you won't be troubled anymore. Oh, thank you, said the doctor. That is really most kind, but I don't think it will be necessary to eat them. Don't let any of them reach the shore until I tell you. Just keep them swimming about, will you? And please make Ben Ollie swim over here so that I may talk to him. And so the shark went off and chased Ben Ollie over to the doctor. Listen, said, um, uh, said Dr. Doolittle, leaning up o over the side. You have been a very bad man, and I understand that you have hurt many people. These good sharks here just offered to eat you up for me, and it, and it would be a good thing indeed if the seas were rid of you. But if you will promise to do as I tell you, I will let you go in safety. What must I do? asked the pirate, looking down sideways at the big shark who was smelling his leg under the water. You must hurt no more people. Now uh, you must hurt no more people, said the doctor. You must stop stealing, and you must never sink another ship. I, um, I think you must give up being a pirate altogether. But what shall I do then? asked Ben Ollie. How shall I live? You and all your men must go on to this island and be farmers, said the doctor. You must grow bird seed for all the canaries. The Barbary Dragon turned pale with anger. Grow bird seed, he groaned in disgust. Can't I be a sailor at least? No, said the doctor, you cannot. You have been a sailor long enough and sent uh, so many ships and good men to the bottom of the sea. For the rest of your life, you must be a peaceful farmer. The shark is waiting. Do not waste any more of his time. Go ahead and make up your mind. Thunder and lightning, he muttered bird seed. Then he looked down in the water again and saw the great fish smelling his other leg. Very well, he said, he said sadly, we'll be farmers. <sighs> and remember, said the doctor, that if you do not keep your promise, if you start hurting and stealing again, I shall hear of it because the canaries will come and tell me and be very sure that I will find a way to punish you. For though I may not be able to sail a ship as well as you, so long as the birds and the beasts and the fishes are my friends, I do not have to be afraid of a pirate chief, even though he calls himself the dragon. So now go and be a good farmer and live in peace. And, and then the doctor turned to the big shark and waving his hand, he said, all right, let them swim safely to land. The next chapter is chapter 16 and we'll read that one tomorrow. All right guys, have a great Monday. I, um, I, I hope you work hard on your schoolwork today, and um, and we'll be back tomorrow with a new video. Love you guys.